Good morning. Hello. We are live from Air Cool Customs in Hazel Green, Alabama. Today is Veterans Day. I thought you guys would enjoy looking at this, our little wall sculpture. All right. Today is Veterans Day, and uh, we are a very, very appreciative group of all that the U.S. veterans have done to sacrifice in order to ensure our liberty and life and uh, we've got lots of veterans who are our clients and our friends and our family and so we just wanted to thank them all right here to start today's broadcast but here we go isn't that lovely AKK so you know you where you are hey Rob let's go see what the guys are doing we have kind of a light day today because um, actually I don't know why but not everybody's here but let's see what we do have. Oh, there we go. Whoa. So we'll go talk to Greg. Cause Spook's got a looking uh, to rebuild his motor. Guess what? You're on. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. So show good. us what you're doing today. Okay. Well, we are pulling apart. We are pulling apart bug. Uh huh. Um, we're changing out the chassis and salvaging all the parts that we can. Okay, and do you think that will be a lot of parts or just a couple parts? Um, I'll get them out, I'll get yeah. them out. She's not too, too bad. It's just the floor pans are pretty messed up. Yeah. Um, they kind of did a little bit of redneck patchwork on it. Yeah. Yeah, we got caulk and, and oh, then yeah, they just kind of, oh, like, is I think it? there's caulk, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's something. That's... Whatever it is, it's not supposed to be there. No. <laughs> and, no. Uh, yeah, right now the stub axle nuts are giving me a, a tough time. And where are they? Over here. Um, are they just kind of... Yeah, well, they're on there really good. Yeah. Um, usually what we do is we take a, a breaker bar and just jump on it. <laughs> um, but it doesn't seem to be working, so we got to wait for Rodney to come back with his impact. Oh, uh, yeah. Gun. All right. And uh, hopefully that'll do the trick. Okay, and he's out today? He is, yeah, so... Taking a little yep, so. holiday off here today. Wow, this is, uh, there's like tree stuff in here. <laughs> or is it that will, horse hair from it, the seeds? Yeah, yeah. horse hair. Mm -hmm. It looks like moss. This okay. is really sad. So what? Yeah. we're going to end up with a nice brand new black gorgeous PR. Yeah, and it's covered. actually, it takes you right over there. Oh, that's that. That is it, yep. I'm going to put that on there. And, uh, that's fantastic. Oh, so this one we're just gonna take parts off, cannibalize it, use it some other time for. <laughs> yep, yep. And then uh, whatever is usable, we're just gonna transfer over to the new. Chassis. Okay. Yeah, we do try to conserve whatever parts we can, but sometimes, sometimes there's not a whole lot that can be used. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty rusty. Yeah. Wow. She's no good. Yeah. What year is this one? Um. I couldn't tell you actually. Hmm. I want to say, say from the 70s, I suppose. Uh, it doesn't say on there. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah. All right. Well, have at it. Be careful. You're up to date on your tetanus, I hope. Um, yes. Good. Good answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Still toe boots? Uh, not quite yet. Oh, not quite yet. All right. That might be a good uh, idea, too. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a good idea. Man. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that should be an all-day project for you. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> well, thanks for coming in today. Yeah. All right. Let's go see. Uh, we'll see the after version. This is very cool. Shiny and black and not rusty at all. This will be a lot better, don't you think? I think Spook's off the phone. Let's see what he's up to. You off the phone? Yes. All right. Customer coming up from Montgomery tomorrow. Oh, cool. Uh, she's going to engine for him. Nice. Brand new person or? Yeah, brand new guy. Um, talked with him, I think I talked with him last year or something at uh -huh. one of the shows. I ended up talking to a lot of people at shows. Yeah. Said, hey, I talked to you at such and such a show. And it's like, you know, cool, hey, uh, you know, always hanging here. Yeah, I it takes a while sometimes. To, I, well, it's been a while, and I talked to a lot of people. So. Well, and that's the thing, too. I was just going to ask you, like, sometimes, uh, I don't want to feed you the line here. How long does it take people often to decide they're going to work with their cool customs? Um, usually about half a second. 
Then they have to get their ducks in a row in order to All do right, it. That's true. So. The decision is half a second. The yeah. ducks. The, so, the duck line up, this guy, he's probably been talking to us for about a year, year and a half. Uh -huh. You know, he's just, he's probably doing a motor with us. So. That's good. Um, we'll see. Yeah. And then sometimes it's like, there's like a gateway <laughs> service that we'll do. So like, oh, new motor. Oh, maybe you could fix this. Maybe that. The yeah. Next thing yeah you know. It's like they get in here. It's like we start showing stuff. The Beetle that you guys are looking at earlier, no uh -huh. words. Um, good example. We were just going to get it tuned up, get the brakes working, and we start to find what we found. It's like then we have to do a new shiny pan, and you know that's not the good way to do it. No, because it's not as cost effective that way, right? I mean, well, we're doing here, it most yeah. cost effective we can for him. Right, but I mean, if you're ordering stuff a la carte, it's always going to be more than if you're like, all right. all right, I want everything, you know. So for those. Oh yeah, well timing's mm -hmm. a little bit easier, you know, we don't have add-ons and add to back up. Right. And, this and, that, so. and then if they change the specs of their car, they're like, oh, you know what, I really want this now. We're happy to do this for We'll me. do it for sure. Um, but if we have all the specs in the work order and we don't get too many changes during the build, it, it, it helps out. Yeah. Because okay. usually any sort of change people make really impacts everything. It ends up costing quite a bit more. Because you've got to go right. back in. There's Retro. other su subsystems that... It's like a domino car. thing, yeah. isn't it? So this is uh, Caden's car, Willie. Willie. So last week, it was uh, we didn't get a lot yeah, of periscope done, but uh, we did get this in. And the reason for this is I still got to go back in and fix some capture notes. Yeah. I just haven't figured out how to do it yet. But it's looking good. Yeah. Well, you figured out. Wait a second. So that's a question. Yeah. You just said I haven't figured out how to do that yet. You've been doing this for 10 years. Don't you know everything? No. Now, there, each situation is a little bit different. I haven't run into this extensive problem within the capture notes. Mm -hmm. If it's just one or two, usually the carriers, which I've got over here, mm -hmm. um, are in good shape and we can just swap them out. But this is what I'm running into right now. This is the carrier for the capture nuts. Okay. And half of them are missing, so I'm probably going to have to oh. manufacture some new ones of these. Yeah. And I just haven't figured out how to do it yet. I mean, okay. Because they'll, they'll end up, they sit like this, and that way they can float for the rail. Right. So this the, the nut will slide back and forth inside that chase. And okay. I've got four of them that are bad. Oh, wow. Out of how many? Uh, 16. Oh, gee. All right. Not too bad, but it's one of the worst ones that we've ever had. Yeah. So I think on Mabel, I had to rebuild two of them, but I was able to save all of those. Oh, when I did my 69, I didn't have any problems whatsoever. Huh. So... Well, that's it good just then. happens. Yeah. So, but that happens a lot where, you know, what I've noticed is that stuff will happen on a build. You'll have something weird you guys find in it or there's a strange problem or whatever. So you spend quite a bit of time, Figuring you know, it out. you're working on stuff, but back burner, your oh, back yeah. brain yeah. is percolating on how do I solve this problem. Yeah, typically, I don't say typically because nothing's typical about this, but like, I don't like to go back in and do welding once we're at this stage. Right. Um, it's it's not a big deal, but it's, for me, it's the process step. We should not be welding at this stage. Mm -hmm. But it, it does end up happening because we'll miss something or we'll get a crack in something that we've got to go back in and fix. Um, hence why Maple's getting a brand new hood because there's a crack in the lip. Right. Um, and it's a bit tweak. Um, but like with this, it's, it's like I just haven't figured out how to do it yet. Yeah. So what's the most cost-effective way? And I'm not charging clients doing onesie twosies trying to figure out. Hey, you know, I spent six hours not getting anywhere. So right, and they you're also you're getting charged for that. And yeah, say, no. and they're also not getting charged for your brain time. Which no, is, I know. Yeah. It's like I'm working on the car while I'm thinking about it. Right. So it, it's, but it, that's an interesting thing, and in it, you know, the difference between a customer and a client. It's like a customer. Here we got this product here it is go you know pay me and go and pay me and go and go away and right and yet a client we take care of them yeah um and we have these we, we have these cars for anywhere from eight to 18 months sometimes mm -hmm. longer uh, sometimes shorter if we're doing a smaller thing and you know those are more customers and clients although we try to treat them all like clients mm -hmm. um but our restorations Every one of them are clients, and on a first name basis with every one of the clients that we've got. Oh, yeah, definitely. Some of them even have my cell phone. That's your Yeah. My personal number. Whoa. So, uh, some of them, not all of them. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like I'm, I'm not hard to get a hold of. No. So, Facebook message me, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. That's um, the best. So, Caden's bug. Yeah. yeah. I'm starting to do the high build cut. Okay. What are these? 
green greenish bluish greenish bluish spots with circles. Well, some of them have circles underneath. It. Yeah, there's circles uh, underneath. It's all filler. It. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, it's stuff that I missed during before pre-filler. Okay. So it's like when I'm going through and shooting, I get this this stuff goes glossy, glossy, shiny. Yeah. All wet, because dries. Honestly, I looked at this before. It looked pretty good. And it looked really, really good. So when did you notice that there were little? Turn at, shoot. Actually, knowing you, I'm gonna say these are probably barely perceptible to the normal human eye. I'm correct? actually kind of happy with the roof. I mean, the 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 light the light stuff means I've done the sanding in it mm -hmm. on the first go around with a 180, um, as long as, and straight of block as I possibly can get. Mm -hmm. I'm using there's my long block. I'm using these two primarily right now. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a Dura block made by 3M. I think it's made by 3M. Um, if not, I think it is. Mm -hmm. um, and then this, and this is just a little no-name kind of metal back. Basically, it's a metal plate attached to a piece of foam rubber, and it flexes. So this is the primary cut on this. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is we're, we're leveling everything out, to make sure we're that it's in plane where it needs to be. And right. The little bits of filler that I've got in here are small. They're very thin anyway. They'll yeah, actually disappear. Yeah, most of will come out. In mm -hmm. fact, if you notice, and I'll show you the little pressure covering, and most of it will come out, but if you notice, like, there's some darker spots in here. Right. Or stuff like this, where there's a transition layer. Yeah. Stuff like this, where there's a tran. This is uncut. This mm -hmm. is cut. So that's actually what I'm going through and putting filler in. Okay. And then uh, I'll go ahead and I'll hit this with uh, 180 again to knock the filler down. The yellow? The yellow. Oh, 180. One, 180 grit, mm -hmm. um, which is the grit I'm using now. Mm -hmm. uh, knock that down with, and then uh, we'll do a 220 with another carbon blast on it. Okay. Um, guide coat. And we'll do the same process and we'll kick it. And that actually should take care of it if there's anything I don't really like. And then we'll hand scrub it down with 360. Cool. Uh, 360 degrees. And then is it paint time? Uh, it goes back into epoxy sealer, mm -hmm. which is the white. The candles, white one. The white, right. which is over there. There you go, guys. And that's one of the gates for RDC. Ron's uh, double cab. Yeah, actually, that's the cargo door cargo and door. the uh, uh, deck lid. Cool. Um, so anyway, it'll uh, go into white. Um, white epoxy sealer, and then we'll cut it one more time, starting at 220, ending up at 320 grit, mm -hmm. or 360 if I've got that paper. Sometimes we'll go to 400, depending on what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, depends on the color itself, because it's pretty, at that point we're just removing scratches. Yeah. Um, the paint has to have something to stick to. So right. We can't right. take all the scratches out of it, otherwise the paint will just fall off. <laughs> and nothing attached to. That would stink. That was driving strange. along, you leave a pile of paint behind you? Slides right off. Yeah. Um, so anyway, if I've got probably about a week's worth of work on this. Um, solid. I mean, a good full week, week and a mm -hmm. half um, to all this to get this ready for the next step. Fantastic. When do you think we'll be painting then? After Thanksgiving? Or? Uh, it'll probably be, yeah, it'll be after Thanksgiving. I probably won't even get into color until probably like December, early January. I still have color tests to do. Oh, right. Um, and then at the point where it goes into epoxy, when I start prepping it for color, the pan starts. Oh, yeah. So, and I'm going to do the body first and then the secondary panels. The reason everything's together at this stage is it's just easier for me to work on. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. But all of this will come apart. Each one of the panels will get done by hand off the car mm -hmm. um, and then put back on the car for the shoots. About how many times do you take apart, put nine. together? Nine. Nine. I already knew that question was yeah. coming. Yeah. About nine times. So... It's a lot of time. And it depends. It's, it's like when we were doing the, uh, the rag top on this, I think I had this in and out of the car over the course of two days, probably eight times mm -hmm. um, before I was happy with the fit and welded it up. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just until it's, until it's right. Yeah. So I have a dentist appointment today, so I don't have much work to, uh, or much time to actually work. No, so I have to don't. cut this a little short. All right. So I hear, I hear Roger. Oh. So we'll do a Roger sighting. Get <laughs> back to work here. Bye. Bye, guys. He can't escape us now. He might try. Ha! <laughs>
We have a Roger sighting. All right. Everybody can go home now. The day is complete. <laughs> yes, you are Waldo. I want to be Waldo. I'm rich, funny looking shirts. Well. And did you ever notice everybody wants to know where is Waldo? Nobody yeah, asks how, how is Waldo. <laughs> you know? How's Waldo that's, feeling? That's true. So, all right, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic Veterans Day. Veterans who are out there, thank you so much for your service. We appreciate you. We'll talk to everybody tomorrow. Bye.